so documentation. Let's talk about documentation and project management. So there are, this gets into the realm of planning, requirements gathering, um, maintenance documentation, um, the, the hit by the bus scenario type of things. So what, where do you uh, see needs for documentation in modern web development project management? So, of course, the documentation is essential for I mean, I think things are going toward documenting by code as much as possible. So like in if you're talking about setting up an infrastructure that'll be done using code to a certain extent, as well as other documentation or how you do particular things to avoid the hit the bus phenomenon and what you're working on and documenting documenting what you're working on in a tool such as this. So documentation doesn't necessarily writing a document, but it could be writing code describing the process that you're doing or keeping up to date some of these tools to what you're doing. Like before, I think there was a more rigid documentation that you had to be doing, but now you're using the tools to, uh, it, it, we still call it documenting the process, but you're still doing it within these tools. So I think that is essential for communication and to know what's going on. In terms of doing that to capture requirements. I mean, you need to do it in some way. So for example, although the tighter loop you have, the, the, you don't need as much documentation if you are the project manager and the programmer, because essentially it's all in your head. So you right. don't need to document anything. Well, not sure. In terms of what that. is what is to be built. Well, still not okay. sure I agree. And here's, okay. here's why. The hit by the bus scenario. If all that stuff is in your head and you get laid up in the hospital for six months, right? And the company has to bring in somebody else to follow you through. They're going to need some kind of documentation to understand what you were thinking when you were thinking it to a point. Now, I agree that going banana crap with that stuff is, is a complete waste of time. Um, you know, like we talked about last week, tests, our spec tests are a great source of documentation and you got to, you need to do them anyway. Um, so I don't think writing a bunch of, you know, God awful requirements documents is a, is a necessity, but, um, putting in like stories or tickets or whatever your terminology is where you are for requirements that's that's how i normally will do requirements documentation is i'll just write a story for it that goes into the ticketing system that way if we ever have to look back and say well what did they say they wanted I, six months from now i don't remember exactly how they said it because now they've said these four other things so you know i think it's important to document it to to that extent yeah so here comes in when you have your own software product and you're the president of the company, <laughs> yeah. things act a little differently. Yep. You still need to address the hit, hit the bus scenario. So you still need a plan if for how you're addressing, but you don't need a whole bunch of in-depth documentation. But definitely the more people on the project, the more documentation that's required. Right. And just so, just for the viewer's knowledge, the, the reason we see these differently is because Creston owns a software development company and develops his own product and, and has his own um, project management stuff going on. So, whereas I am working for big corporations in large team environments, so we have very different requirements because of our different environments that we're developing in. Both of us are primarily Ruby on Rails developers, but we have very different environments because of the, the I, I'm mostly team centered and he's more, more on the lone wolf side most of the time. Yeah. And, but, you know, but again, in my consulting, 
what generally happens is that someone comes to me with the their idea or their and then we develop something from from that point so for example they may put a ticket in jira and i take a look at that and de develop the plan and put some documentation in the jira tickets so, okay this is how i'm going to approach this this is what i'm going to do and you know do this set up in staging or something like this and then they may communicate back a little bit so there that documentation is is done in that sense it's like right. whenever you're interacting with with others is where it becomes critical to do that mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing is when i've done kind of the lone wolf programming scenarios i find that i just get very lax with that part of project management um because it's not nearly as necessary when i'm in those environments when i'm when i'm in large team environments i i'm documenting the crap out of stuff because i don't want to have to tell 10 different people the same thing over and over i just want it in the it, it here's the story go look at it you, it's, it's there you know or let's have one one meeting and talk about these things or you know but uh, yeah it's the lone wolf environments are I, I what i find for me is that this stuff kind of drops by the wayside for the most part i'm still very aggressive about tests but yeah i mean it goes back to kind of what we were saying before if you are the product owner and the developer you don't need as much documentation as you do when, the, but as you add more people, as those people are more distributed, as you have multiple layers of management or different teams you're interacting with, the requirement for documentation goes up. Right. If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here, or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.